thank you so much for helping us reach 1,000 subs, as well as all the support everyone has given us. It's so mind-blowing how quickly we were able to reach the milestone, and we're just so excited to see the channel grow even further. On that note, let's get right to it. Some maps require extra jump height for Sojourn. You can super jump by pressing jump, power slide, jump in rapid succession, and the key is to barely touch the ground. I hope everyone already knows this one by now, but you can visually see when Sojourn and Doomfist are charged up. Mercy can fly infinitely in the air in theory by using Guardian Angel and Crouch. Sigma's accretion and primary fire does a total of 210 damage, but enemies can survive if you primary fire as the rock stuns the enemy. Instead, you can prevent the enemies from surviving the combo by firing immediately as the accretion's animation ends. There's a way to increase Sigma's burst damage during Gravitic Flux. Your head counts as the ground so you can deal fall damage quicker by having the enemies land onto you rather than the ground. This can be used to counter Baptiste's immortality field. In an extreme use case, you can even counter Zenyatta's Transcendence. You can cut off the Transcendence healing with the shield and kill the enemy in mid-air. There's a better version of Roadhog's original hook and ult combo. Now that Roadhog can use abilities during ult, you can ult hook ult to secure kills on higher HP targets. In Overwatch 2, Torbjorn can no longer cancel the sound of his primary fire by switching to the hammer. Orisa can use Fortify and Javelin Spin at the same time to completely mitigate both the effects and damage of certain abilities like Doomfist Punch. Originally, Genji's ultimate did not work when the timer was under 1 second due to the sheathing animation, cancelling the slide. Slash. In Overwatch 2, the Slash will actually go through even under the 1 second time limit. Symmetra's turrets can block Junker Queen's knife. This one could be useful. If you press Crouch as Wraithform expires, you can see the head move down. You can fling your head at box if you quickly press Crouch at the end of the animation. Not super useful yet, but instead if you cancel Wraithform and Crouch at the same time, you get a much quicker motion of hitbox displacement, making you harder to hit and giving you the chance to take the first shot more safely. This is what happens when Diva's mech gets destroyed. You just fall out, but if you hold space as you exit the mech, you get boosted into the air, making it harder to predict where you'll end up. Diva's mech during self-destruct will block damage, so you can hide behind it for cover. When you recall your mech, you should hug and face the wall. This will push your body, making it harder to be killed during the animation. If there is no wall, you can stand on ledges instead. Melee on Diva no longer stops your boosters. The explosion on Junkrat's Concussion Mine actually goes through walls, but this only works for Junkrat and won't damage enemies from the other side. The knockback on Zenyatta's Snapkick ignores all shields. You can bait a Widowmaker with sights by kicking outside the corner as a Zenyatta. Brigitte's Shield Bash now can pass through shields. Brig's Shield Bash still has a counter charge mechanic, so don't be afraid to stop a punching Doomfist. Cassidy's Combat Roll has a 50% damage reduction. This means that he can survive Tracer's Pulse Bomb by reducing the damage from 350 to 175. Including the 5 damage on stick, he can live with 45 health left over. Cassidy's Deadeye also has a 50% damage reduction, so you can do the same thing as the first hit. The original High Noon always fired from right to left, but in Overwatch 2, Deadeye will fire in the order the enemies are spotted. This only takes into account the original vision check, and it's unrelated to the skull icon. If all enemies are spotted simultaneously, the interaction will be identical to Overwatch 1. You can pump in extra damage by placing his magnetic grenade next to a sleeping target. With the Fanda Hammer and Grenade Splash damage, you can deal up to 365 damage before the enemy can move. But you do have to make sure that the grenade hits the ground and not the sleeping target. Cassidy's Deadeye registration has slightly changed. Abilities that make the hero disappear will now restart the lockout meter on the hero. Okay. The Nano Boost damage amplification applying to Sombra's EMP was a bug. It's been patched now, so don't expect to be able to do some boosted EMP damage. As Sombra, if you fire after hacking in stealth, there's an animation delay. You can actually remove the delay by exiting stealth mode during the hack. You can do this by either pressing shift again, or just holding primary fire also works. You can no longer break Torbjorn turrets by placing Sombra's translocator under it. Symmetra's turrets will respond to a hacking Sombra, but a Torbjorn's turret will 
will not make. Here you go, Suzu has knockback, so you can get environmental kills with the ability. You can counter Wrecking Ball's pile driver on ledges by knocking him back off the edge to his death. You can use the knockback on Kiriko Suzu to escape more safely from enemies. You can also reduce the time Suzu takes to hit the ground by looking down and crouching. It's a small difference, but this could save your life in situations where even a millisecond matters. This is an example of using both the knockback and the crouch. You can swift step into Bob, but not to Junkrat's Riptire. When Kiriko looks up, her head hitbox disappears. Although the arm hitbox was reduced, you still have a chance to block the headshots. You don't need to spam swift step, you can just hold down shift now thanks to an earlier quality of life change. Kiriko's swift step can be cancelled due to its cast time, but it's virtually impossible to react to the ability. Maywalls can block Kitsune Rush, but it can be difficult to react to, like blocking Urch. Shatter. You can cancel Kiriko's swift step by climbing walls. If you time it right, Kiriko can swift step into the teleporting reaper. It's not easy, but definitely possible. It's also theoretically possible with Symmetra and Sombra as well, but reaper is much easier to pull off thanks to the animation. Winston's secondary fire range is 30 meters, which is surprisingly long. You can fully charge a secondary fire even with one ammo left. You can combo secondary fire, leap, and melee to deal up to 130 damage. You can use this to burst down targets like so. You can now recall Junker Queen's knife when using Carnage manually. You couldn't manually recall the knife while you use Carnage in the alpha. The automatic recall of Jagged Blade is around the same as 4 primary fires or 2 primary fires and a reload. Junker Queen's melee can inflict wound damage with a knife, but with no knife, you can't inflict wounds. You can increase the hitbox of Junker Queen's Carnage and melee by turning your screen. If you ping after you die, you can ping the location of the enemy that killed you. You can measure how far you are from an enemy using the ping system. You can use this to stay out of range of specific hero abilities like Rodok's Hook, which has a maximum range of 21 meters, and Sigma's primary fire with 25 meters. As Wrecking Ball, you can ping enemies while completely hidden in ball form. You can ping targets that are visible through walls, whether it's through Widowmaker's Sights, Sonic Arrow, and Hacked Targets. You can now cancel Reinhardt's charge, which you can utilize to bait enemies like so. When Reinhardt cancels his charge, he goes up in the air slightly. You can use this to super jump and quickly get to high ground. Reinhardt can travel further by jumping after a charge. Similarly, Doomfist can do the same by cancelling Seismic Slam and jumping as you hit the ground. Doomfist's regular rocket punch normally has a small hitbox, but if you turn your camera before you land the punch, you can actually increase the hitbox to a much larger area. And as for the charge punch, it's already busted enough. Rocket Punch will land on Torbjorn's turret, as well as May's Ice Wall, but it doesn't work on May's Cryo Freeze. Oh. As a Doomfist, you can block the damage from Sigma's ult by looking up into the sky during power block. Romatra can do the same thing to block the incoming damage. But with Bastion, even though the missiles technically come from the sky, you can't block it by looking up. This accounts for both Doomfist and Romatra. Not completely sure why you can't block looking up, but instead, you have to block facing towards the center of the circle. You should use Ramatra's ult and Nemesis form separately, or after cancelling Nemesis form to allow the extra armor to regenerate each time. Torbjorn's Molten Core actually has impact damage. There are also hidden items on the Just For You page of the shop. You can find them by scrambling through the hero gallery, but... Uh, I'm not sure if it's completely worth it. You can adjust sliders in your game settings by increments of 10 when you click on either side of the adjustment knob. That was all the tips for this video, and if you know any other tips or tricks, let us know down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this was Sapling from Crow Overwatch.